Before we jump into the episode today, I want to share something with you from my heart. First of all, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really can't tell you how much your support means to me. We've been doing the podcast now for almost four years. I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that listens, shares an episode with your friends, sends me a DM or a text message letting me know how an episode resonates with you or any aha moments. Seriously, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to create this podcast. It has been such a blessing in my life and I love hearing the ways it's been able to provide value in yours as well. One thing you might not know is how much work it takes to be consistent with a podcast. In fact, did you know that the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode number 10? And we are well, 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 well beyond that. And it's just a lot thinking of the episodes, recording them, editing them, managing the guests, making sure that everything runs smoothly and gets uploaded consistently and regularly. And so that's why I have created an amazing opportunity for you to support the podcast monetarily. And in exchange for that, you will get exclusive premium subscriber content. So for as little as $3 a month, you can become a premium subscriber subscriber of the podcast. And every month I will upload new voice guided workouts and breathwork meditation audio for you. So that way you can work out with me coaching you in your ears. You can also take a moment to reduce your stress and relax and come down and ground down with one of my breathwork audios. So if that is on your heart to support the podcast for as little as $3 a month to become a premium podcast subscriber, I can't tell you how much that means to me and the growth of this podcast. I appreciate you. If you're interested, click the link in the description, become a premium podcast subscriber, new content every month. And while supplies last, I'll send you an exclusive podcast coffee mug so you can have your self-love and sweat coffee every morning. I appreciate you. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, the place where you'll get inspired to live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections, break down barriers, and do what sets your soul on fire. I'm your host, London Souza. Hey, have you grabbed your free self-love and sweat monthly calendar yet? This calendar is so amazing. It comes right in your inbox every single month to help you have a little nugget of wisdom, a sweaty workout, a mindset activity, just a little something, something to help keep you focused and motivated and keep that momentum towards your goals. So every day when you get this calendar, you'll see a link that you can click that will lead to a podcast episode or a workout or something that will be very powerful and quick to read. And then you'll also see on the top left corner of every single day, there's a little checkbox in the calendar. And what that is, is that's for your one thing. You can choose one thing every month, or it can be the same, something that you want to implement and make this something that you can easily implement like daily meditation or getting a certain amount of steps or water, for example, and staying hydrated and even taking your supplements. This can be something if you want to get more regular doing a particular habit and routine, you can choose what that checkbox means. So if you want your self-love and sweat free monthly calendar delivered right to your inbox every month on the first of the month, go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash calendar, fill out the form really quickly, and you will have your calendar in your inbox within a few short minutes. That's Life Like London, L-I-F-E-L-I-K-E-L-U-N-D-E-N.com forward slash calendar. Go get yours for free and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Jana Danielson back on the show. We talked about pelvic floor health and really dove into the anatomy of our pelvic floor and our diaphragm and kind of that cylinder space that we have and get to utilize um, through a lot of pelvic floor work. We talked about her cooch ball and so many amazing things. And I said, Jana, let's come back and let's talk 
more about pelvic floor and a little bit more uh, trauma and healing and um, just go a little bit deeper. So I'm so excited to have you back here, Jana. I'll let you kind of reintroduce yourself a little bit for those that are excited to listen to this and check out the previous episode. And then maybe if you've listened before, then uh, this will be a reintro into the wonderful world of Jana and her, her cooch ball and pelvic floor wellness. Mm, London. Well, thanks for having me back. We had such a fabulous conversation the first time around. And anytime someone offers me the opportunity to help educate and inspire, you know, men and women about their body, I am always going to say yes. And so I love your audience. I love your community and I love what you do. So thanks for having me back. Um, I am a pelvic floor expert really by accident that wasn't my, you know, that wasn't my career path. I was gifted in my late teens and early twenties, a pain journey. And my pain journey was digestive in nature. But those of you who have lived with any kind of pain, chronic or acute, you know that it's not just one part of the body. Your entire body responds to that pain. We don't want to live in pain. And so we have this nervous system that has two parts to it, the sympathetic, which is the fight or flight and the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest. And for about, for sure, four years of my life, I, if I went back and watched myself as that, you know, 17 to 21 year old, I would bet that I was 98% of the time in fight or flight, not knowing it, but my body was alarm bells all the time. And you can, you know, if I look, go back and look at pictures, you can see it in my posture, that very protective forward rounded posture. We actually see that posture in a lot of young women, especially as their bodies start to develop, uh, you know, usually a little bit sooner than, you know, the boys in their class and they, they hide that posture. Well, that really is pain protecting posture. It's like a, it's like a coat of a suit of armor, basically. And that was my life, right? For those listening, the posture that Jana is doing, if you're watching the video, you can see it, but she's really like, you're rounding your shoulders, you're closing in, yeah. over, um, you know, shortening, let's say the spine or like, you know, some of the people in their journey sometimes like feel like they get taller or lengthen or just whatever. And the way that you're doing that is like really, yeah, hunched over, closing off that heart space um, and just, yeah, very closed off. So I just wanted to illustrate that. Listening. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Thanks for doing that. And so, and that was my life and I didn't know any different. And I actually thought at one point, well, I just, <laughs> I pulled the short straw. God gave me some sort of a pain because I must've done something. Um, and what I realized after my medical team told me that after two years of, of treating and not finding a diagnosis and not having any um, relief from my situation, they told me that the pain was in my head, I was seeking attention and I should have a nice life. And what I didn't realize then was that that was the biggest gift that my doctor could have given me because I was so in train to believe that I needed someone in a white coat with a stethoscope. And I'm not, you know, poo-pooing the medical industry at all. But I think sometimes when you don't fit into a diagnosable box, you can get lost really quickly, or you can get diagnosed with kind of a, a catch-all, um, you know, chronic fatigue or chronic this or chronic that. And then you become that. You, your brain actually becomes that. And so when I was told those words and I went into my probably six months of depression thinking that would my body be able to have children? Should I even marry my then fiance? Um, I started wondering what else was out there. And when I started wondering that, I saw Madonna on the cover of, of a fitness magazine in the fall of 1999. I bought the magazine. The article was all about Pilates. And I learned about this form of movement. Movement is medicine, gang. It really is. And this form of, of movement focuses on spinal alignment, breathing, proper spinal movement, which we all need in, in everything, you know, in our daily living. And when I started doing Pilates, um, it took me only four months. So after 16 weeks of Pilates, I was off all 11 of my prescription medications and I really had a new lease on life, but I did not understand what just happened and how my body went from fear to really freedom and confidence just through moving and breathing. And we want to talk about that today because I think sometimes for a lot of years, if someone would have talked about trauma, 
I would have said to them, oh, I've never, I've never had a traumatic experience. But Dr. Amy Apigian, who I interviewed last year for a summit that I did, she defined trauma this way, and I want to share it with you. She defined trauma as too much too soon or not enough for too long. And isn't that such a beautiful way of, dis, of you know, defining trauma? Um, you know, trauma could be something as simple as just, you know, missing someone in your life and not seeing them for, you know, for, for too long or not getting those hugs you need. And so the pelvic floor, even though my pain was digestive, my pelvic floor was responding. I was in a state of fear. I became very disconnected from the world because as we know, the pelvic floor sits in our pelvis. So the pelvis is the, if you put your hands on your hips, essentially you're putting your hands on your pelvis, the bones of your pelvis. Your pelvic floor lives like a hammock underneath or within that pelvic bowl. It holds up our organs. It, um, you know, it helps us to function with our urination and our elimination system. Um, and it also has a lot of nerves around it, which can create pleasure or can create pain. So I think sometimes we forget about the pelvic floor and the importance of it because A, we don't see it. It's a group of muscles we don't see, like we can see our biceps or we can see our glutes, right? And we also, I feel as a society, are told by big corporations that this is inevitable as a woman you're going to eventually start laughing and coughing and peeing a little bit, you know, add on if you are premenopausal, perimenopausal, or you just had a baby. So we kind of expect it as women. And for the guys in the community, erectile dysfunction is one of the most um, known pelvic floor symptoms, but yet big pharma tells us that it's something that you need to take a pill for and in 90% of the cases, that is actually not true. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it literally is like a wonderful world of the pelvic floor when it comes to both men and women and the knowledge that you've acquired through your experience and through the thousands of people that you've worked with. And I love these conversations because I feel like we get so, uh, yeah, uncomfortable somehow, or we're not taught to be really, not even say you tell everybody all your things, right? But just to have these conversations or to be able to ask why, or could this potentially be something that, you know, I can work within or kind of do things in my lifestyle or have, you know, some awareness and spaces that could allow for deeper healing outside of just take this pill, do this particular thing. And so I want to um, dive in to talk about our lower energy centers. Maybe you guys have heard of the chakras before and that root chakra, the sacral chakra, solar plexus, a lot of those lower energy centers. And I know specifically the root chakra is the energy center where the pelvic floor is. And meditation has been a huge part of my healing journey. So has um, breath work and using your cooch ball and things like that. So I remember being... Um, yeah, new with meditation and uh, doing the meditations uh, with Dr. Joe of blessing of the energy centers. So you go through all the um, different chakras and energy centers and he'll say like, find it, feel it, notice it, pay attention to it. Like these are like, you know, just awareness in space and in that space. And I remember for the longest time, I like would lose my, you know, lose focus, think about other things, not be able to be present in those lower energy centers. When I get up to my heart, throat chakra, a lot of these higher energy centers, I was able to put my awareness there, but it was as if the healing journey, I now I know, had just begun because there wasn't even um, attention or awareness happening in that space. We can be very closed off kind of in the way that you hunched over. I can see how that can happen through different types of trauma um, to be closed off in a lot of those lower energy spaces. And I didn't know it at the time. I just remember being like, oh, I just like tap out and energy centers one, two, and sometimes three. I kind of am in that meditative kind of focused, but not there uh, way. Maybe people listening who meditate, you can kind of um, understand a little bit what I mean there. But I was like, it was just kind of annoying. It was kind of like, I don't know, in fitness, if there was an exercise or something I just like wasn't that good at yet, I was like, oh, I want to like 
practice getting my focus there? Like what is there? And so, yeah, I want to talk about that. I want you to um, go into, yeah, what is there? What can we uncover when we start to do work in those um, lower energy centers? Hey, really quick. I want to interrupt the podcast for just a minute to tell you about one of my favorite supplements for hair, skin, nails, digestive, and gut health. And that is Snap Supplements Super Greens with Collagen. Now, if you're following me on social media, you've probably seen me post about this a bunch because honestly, this product tastes amazing and it's jam-packed with nutrients, like I said, to support healthy hair, skin, and nails. It helps support detoxification, a healthy immune system, and there's even probiotics in there for a healthy gut. It's non-GMO, no sugar added, soy-free grass-fed collagen, and every scoop is going to give you seven grams of protein. And this is why I love it because it's not like a protein shake. It's just a scoop of powder. It tastes amazing. I put it in water, or if I want more hydration, I'll put it in coconut water and mix it up. And it's like having a nice refreshing beverage that's packed with a bunch of super greens and protein. So what I'm super excited about is that for listening to the podcast, you'll get this discount here, nowhere else, but for listening to the podcast, you can save 25% off on all your snap supplement purchases, including the super greens with collagen. And you do that by using code London 25 at checkout. That's L U N D E N 25 L U N D E N two five to get 25% off at checkout. You can shop on snapsupplements.com or you can shop on my website, lifelikelondon.com forward slash supplements. And you'll see there, there's already an additional 10% taken off, but you, because you're a podcast listener, you're going to get 25% off when you use the code London 25 at checkout. L-U-N-D-E-N 25 at checkout to get your snap supplements, super greens, and collagen, and all your snap supplements for 25% off. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah. Okay. So for those, everyone who's listening, let's just do, let's just get a baseline here of, of what this muscle feels like. Okay. So we've probably all heard of a Kegel and you know what, I'm going to, just have you imagine that you're stopping the flow of urine right now. Men, women, just pretend you're stopping the flow of urine. There's that squeeze in that lower part of your body. And then just let the flow of urine start again, okay? And then just do two or three of those little squeezes. Squeeze and release, squeeze and release, squeeze and release, okay? So those are, yes, your pelvic floor is working. Yes, your glutes are contracting. There's some other work there from, you know, the adductors, your inner thigh muscles. There's a little bit of work in your transverse abs, all those um kind of anatomical pieces that are helping that contraction happen. And we can really, unbeknownst to us, we can hold a lot of tension in that part of our body and we don't even realize it. So, you know, the people that I've worked with in the past predominantly are in this kind of in this box, right? They don't even know, like you say, relax, and they think they are, but that if it was an, if it was, if your pelvic floor was an elevator, it's like on the ninth floor and maybe it gets down to the fifth floor. It actually never really gets down to the lobby. So we do things we get, you know, we're told, oh, we need to strengthen our pelvic floor. Um, we need to do Kegels and actually Kegels can create a little bit more trouble for that part of our body. And so that's what I mean. Unbeknownst to us, we, you know, those of you who live where there are seasons and you're driving on an icy road or walking on an icy parking lot, or, you know, you're driving and, a, you know, a ball bounces across the street and you, you hold, we watch a scary movie. You don't realize your breath starts to become a little more erratic. You pull the covers up, you know, past your nose, you're holding tension, right? You're going to write an exam. You're going to have a conversation with your boss. You need to have a conversation with your partner. You are unknowingly holding tension in that area. It's like a sponge for emotion. And so that root chakra, the energy center at the base of our spine can become very closed off. It, it, it becomes inaccessible to a lot of us and we're just not understanding that. What do we start feeling? We might start feeling a lack of being grounded, like being super indecisive. We might start feeling a lack of safety. 
um, with ourselves, in our relationships, with our job, you know, always thinking about worst case scenario, doing all those what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And it might not be like that might not be in your normal pattern or behavior, but those are just really subtle ways. If you know what you're looking for when you're disconnected from that root chakra, it can actually be that can be some of those those pieces that you're that you're experiencing. The other important thing to understand, and I just learned this like less than a year ago. So we have millions and millions and millions of nerves that run through our body that are like the communication system, like the telephone wires, right? And the main nerve that runs from our brain to our pelvic floor in a woman's body and in a man's body is called the pudendal nerve, all right? This nerve has two super important jobs. Job number one is as a communication system. So it's like a highway. It sends messages, um, you know, when to hold, oh, I'm, I'm picking up I'm picking up 10 bags of groceries, right? Or, oh, I'm climbing up this ladder to, you know, get to the top of this wall I'm painting. It sends messages because the pelvic floor works to protect the spine. It, it connects through the, to the diaphragm, which is our main muscle of respiration. There's lots going on and we don't even realize it. So the pudendal nerve is a communicating nerve. It's also a sensory nerve, which means that all the pleasure, all the pain, and everything in between gets communicated through that nerve. Now, here's something pretty spectacular that I feel we all need to understand. And I think it's one of the reasons why we don't talk about this part of our body or it's not normalized like other parts of the body is that the Latin root of pudendal means ashamed. So, the Latin root of the nerve that communicates and brings sensation to the pelvic floor is rooted in the energy and the frequency of ashamed. Like if we looked at um, David R. Hawkins' scale of consciousness, right? Ashamed, like we are below 200 at that point. Like it is, it is not great. It's not a good place to be. And so couple that with maybe the household you grew up in where learning about your body was taboo. You know, you didn't call, you didn't call your anatomy vagina or penis. Your parents may have given, given it a different word. You, you know, um, we've never, it was wrong. Like it was wrong to like look or touch right in that, that, you know, good girls didn't do that and good boys didn't do that. And so we come with these belief systems that, we know it's there. And if it's not causing any trouble, we just, you know, go on with our lives. Um, yet a little bit of understanding can bring so much healing. We cannot heal if we are in survival mode all the time. And that pudendal nerve being rooted in ashamedness and us not wanting to really understand what that part of our body does, it keeps us in survival. So we can't thrive, we can't heal until we move through that. And that's one of the things that the cooch ball does a really good job of. Physically, that area needs blood flow. Any muscle that is void of oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood is like a plant without water. I said that in the first in our first podcast together. Take a plant out of sunlight and don't water it and see what happens in 30 days. It's exactly the same with our body. Any muscle that is lacking oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood, it's not if it's going to die, it's when it's going to die. So that's, um, that's why I was inspired to take action and create something you know that's a fitness tool, that's easy to use, because when you can bring blood flow into that root chakra, it's almost like giving it this beautiful hug. It's like... It's like taking a big breath of air and you can start to connect in a really beautiful way. I'm not saying that there's not going to be little hiccups and it might bring up a lot of emotion. We'll talk about the psoas in a second. Uh, it doesn't mean it's like this linear line of healing. There's going to be ebbs and there's going to be flows. But when you can understand that, it's really empowering because now you understand when you start to feel a little bit locked down what you can do or how to break through, you know, London, you talked about in your meditation, like just having trouble connecting there. How, you wouldn't have known, some people don't even know that they're not connecting. And so that's kind of, that's, that's the first part of it. Yes. And that's what I think 
I didn't say that specifically, but I love that you said that some people don't know that they're not connecting. And that's the conversations I like to have is really like, Hey, (laughs) there's some conversations that even if you didn't know you needed to be listening to them, there's some that need to be listened to. And that's what I really feel about this. Cause yeah, if I didn't, you know, do a meditation style that required, let's say, tapping into those energy centers, I wouldn't have, you know, spent time in those spaces to be like, oh, wait, why can I open up my heart or I don't have, you know, blockage that I can sense, but here maybe, right? And it became like a whole new language and a type of learning. And I love what you said about that breath of fresh air, because I feel like it's, um, yeah, it's like clearing the channel or um, like a straw almost with no plug where it's like information can travel um, the way that it's supposed to without a muffled signal, without some of those um, blocks when we check in regularly. And that's what I learned too, is just like exercise um, being a regular thing, a uh, part of what you do. I realized in my healing journey, just because I was able to have awareness that maybe I couldn't connect in the space, then was able to connect doesn't mean that then, you know, I'm done or it's over. Like I keep working in, working in, yeah, working in and working out to, um, to kind of utilize what can be learned when we can tap into those spaces. And, um, I won't go into too much detail, but I've had, yeah, some really profound, magical, wonderful healing experiences and new perspective shifts when I've stayed persistent in, um, visiting and that the awareness in a lot of those spaces. And so, um, sometimes we hear something on a podcast somewhere that, you know, allows us to go into a door that we didn't know would be helpful. And I think, you know, it's wonderful and it can be, it can be messy and sticky and the healing journey, um, you know, of choosing to kind of look in a lot of those spaces, um, can like require that support and that love and conversations like this to process. I had a really great conversation with a friend of mine yesterday, wasn't particularly on this topic, but kind of. And at the end we were both like, yeah, it's so wonderful that we could have this conversation and we could, you know, have a dialogue, like you said, that isn't always traditional in homes or when we, you know, it's like pee pee and your privates and it's like penis or vagina become like, oh, I can't say certain things. And so I like being able to have platforms like this and people like you, or we can say the things and people can realize, oh, wow, that can be so powerful. Um, and you mentioned that uh, the SOAS was so important, and a powerful um place to tap into. And I was sharing this to you before we pressed record, but I had a friend who told me, he's like, oh yeah, I had, you know, so-and-so she worked on my psoas and I was crying like a baby. And oh my gosh, I thought I was getting like a a massage in in a sense of maybe like deep tissue or some, you know, some deeper work, like a physical feeling of good. He goes, but man, that was a huge release for me. Floodgates were open. And, um, that's it. That's a, um, the psoas is housed and living in that space and can be super powerful. So I like that we have the two P's there, the pudendal nerve and the psoas to think of as we're learning more about this area. Yeah. Well, you know, so many people have hip flexor issues, right? Um, You know, tight hip flexors, tight hips. And so they will, they'll go to massage or, you know, you can use your cooch ball, lay on your cooch ball, do a release. But I've really been diving into learning more about the psoas um, lately. And just quick, a quick, quick, quick um, explanation. This is a muscle. It's a hip flexor muscle. So if you were like marching, if you're running, going upstairs, it helps to lift the leg. The muscle attaches on the inside of the long leg bone of the femur called at, at the greater or the lesser trochanter. And then it comes up through the pelvis and it attaches to all of the bones of the lumbar spine. So all five of those lower back vertebrae and their little spongy intervertebral discs. So just understand they're like two pillars, like, um, you know, like the Queens guards at, um, in London that are just standing watch of the gate. That's kind of what the psoas muscles are. And I mean, it's no coincidence that I used the word guard because they do become very, um, they can become very guarded. And here's just, here's what I learned last week when I was doing some, some studying on this is that 
When we are developing as an embryo, the psoas is one of the first muscles to be um, developed. And it is the book I was reading, the author talked about the psoas almost less of a muscle and more like an organ, like the tongue. Like there's way more sensation in the psoas than we actually think. And some of the new research is showing that the psoas responds to any sort of emotion quicker than the other muscles do. So the psoas is kind of like the, like I said, the guard, like if there's danger coming, it tells all the other muscles in the body, like danger, hold or stop or be careful, right? It's, it's, it's that, it's that quick. And see, here's the problem is that our body is meant to go into fight or flight for sure. That, I mean, we are meant to do that. When we're in fight or flight, our appetite diminishes uh, because we don't we're, we shouldn't be eating at that point. If there's danger, we should get the heck out. We get blood flow from the heart getting really quickly pumping into our extremities so we can get the heck out of there. We lose our thirst mechanism. All of that happens, right? And so, but here's the thing, everyone. We are very quickly supposed to go back to parasympathetic, rest and digest, take it easy, like chill. But that's not happening in our lives. We are functioning at this heightened anxiety and stress level without even knowing about it. So the psoas is sending these messages all over the place. Then we start getting constipated. We start getting bloated. We start getting inflammation at our joints. And we're like, what's happening to our body, right? Like, even if you're eating well and, and exercising, don't fool yourself. Your emotion, your emotional body and your energetic body are laughing at you if you think that we are just a physical being because that we're not one dimensional at all. And so when you understand this about the psoas and why London, your friend, you know, said he was crying like a baby is really when that muscle is developing and we're in utero, we are absorbing all the energy, frequency, emotion from our mom while we are growing inside of her. And so, you know, even if you have the most, you know, pregnancy was planned, a great relationship with a partner, a great, whatever it is, this is still something very new in the body. There's always going to be a little bit of anxiety, wondering how things are. Am I supposed to be feeling this? And so we get, we're, we're born and we have these energetic imprints in this part of our body. Um, fast forward to where we are now. What do we do most of the time? We sit in front of computers. The psoas gets shorter and shorter and shorter. We're more stressed. We maybe don't hydrate as much. This muscle can become a thermometer for you of health. If you have a healthy psoas, I guarantee you every other aspect of your body is going to be healthy. If you are locked down, every other aspect of your body, whether you're conscious about it or not, is going to be impacted by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love learning um, more and more about the psoas. And I love that you said it's more like an organ or like a tongue where there's like a uh, a mind in there, if that makes sense, or like yes, this, you know, yes, this that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. My tongue has a mind, but it does things yeah. that other muscles, right? It like gets into um, different formations and provides different um, support in in ways that, yeah. Just when you said that, and then and the thinking about it, it just became a little bit more, yeah, alive for me. And through doing more work within my pelvic floor and so as, and all of those things, like I shared with my friend's experience, um, it very much is a, an alive thing. And, um, yeah, I just, I think another muscle that most people or organ that most people think, oh yeah, I want to, you know, check my abs or I want my booty or my shoulders to be a type of way. But because we don't see our so as, or nobody's like, oh, how toned is your so as? It's yeah. like not something that we think to to focus in on or hone in on, and it can just be, yeah, such a a powerful um, space to explore. Let's say within our healing journey and within our physical body. And um, 
you mentioned when you started and saw that magazine and tapped into Pilates and being able, I know you, you know, we could, I could talk about your story all the time, but it's like, you know, then fast forward, you were able to get off of different types of medication and, you know, work with your body in a, in a whole new way, get to know your body in a whole new way. And, um, with my clients that I work with one-on-one, we do a lot of writing. I love a written exposure therapy. I love the rewriting of the story reframe, and it can be really helpful for, um, and that's what it's, that's what it was um, studied for is really helpful for, for trauma and for processing trauma and through learning about a lot of people and their trauma and the way they've chosen to rewrite their stories. It's been so beautiful in this fitness realm because for the longest time while I was coaching fitness and doing my thing, of course I had done Pilates and explored a lot of different modalities, but in terms of what I was teaching and coaching and even predominantly doing on my own was more like traditional strength training. I would do yoga and high intensity. And it was more like, okay, that variety to get my physical body ready, prevent injury, improve performance, which is wonderful goals, right? But then when I started working with more and more people and myself, and then starting to see exercise as an opportunity to like be a supporter in that healing journey, then it was like, oh, Pilates makes so much sense when it comes to restoring a lot of that connection and that healing in those lower energy centers. And I remember having this moment with one client in particular, and we both were like, oh yeah, Pilates is that next step. Like she knew, she knew what that area that needed to be strengthened and, uh, um, the connection needed to be cultivated there. And it was really, it had nothing to do with like, oh, your physical goal is you want to look good in a swimsuit by the time you go to your beach event. It was like, no, this is the next logical step to use movement in my healing journey. And to be honest, it probably wouldn't have, and I love the way the universe works that way, but I had talked with you a lot, followed a lot of what you were doing, then you know, incorporating some different types of healing in the coaching I was doing. And be, like it was like a little a little nugget from you that I thought of. I was like, oh yeah, I'd been using the cooch ball, working more pelvic floor, and it just kind of uh, made sense to be part of the plan in something that had nothing to do with like a physical fitness plan. And I just think that's like also the thing that maybe people don't know they need to know is like your workouts can really be part of that healing journey to get us into that rest and digest um, state you know, walking, I've never walked more in my life than I have over the last year and a half, not thinking I have to run or need to do mm-hmm. the hard, thing. you know, some good few minutes with my cooch ball, a nice walk, some breath work. And I just feel like the the healing benefits plus the physical, you know, we like to see what we see too, right? In our own bodies and kind of feel good in our skin that that's been so profound thanks to you. So what would you mm-hmm. um, add to that? I just feel so grateful. Oh, well, London, that, I mean, that's exactly, I feel like that's why I was put on, on this earth is to help people just find those little nuggets when it comes to wellness. I, I would love your audience to really take what you just said to heart, because if you think about, um, the way fitness has been framed for a lot of us. It's, you know, you need to do X number of days a week. Here's the duration. Here's the intensity. Make sure you're stretching. Like it's kind of like a formula or a recipe, right? Like just imagine we opened up a cookbook, but it's like a, a movement book <laughs> and you're, you know, you, what do you want the outcome to be? Well, here's the recipe. Here's what you have to follow. And I think what I've come to appreciate more now than anything, I'm, this is my 50th year. So I'm going to be 50 on Christmas Eve, um, this year. And I instituted this fun little mindset for myself called Project Fab 50. And I want to know when I wake up on December 24th, I want to meet the most healthy version of Jana that has ever walked this planet in this half century, right? And it's not for me about a number on a scale or a size hanging in my closet it's not, uh, it, it really is not any of that, but I'm having so much fun seeing what I can do. And in kind of opposite, I've been such a Pilates aficionado, you know, master trainer for the past two decades. I actually talked myself into thinking that 
I didn't need the weight training because that was concentric and I got enough concentric movement during my day. And if I focused on Pilates and eccentric movement, that was the balance. And here's what happened. Like three months ago, all of a sudden I was like, I would love to get back to the gym and feel that burn of lifting, you know, a bar over my head. And, um, and so this is one of the things that I've learned over these past 90 days is that I think sometimes when it comes to fitness, we, we prescribe or subscribe to the old so many times a day, so much, you know, intensity. I, I would love people to let that, let that go just like how you have and kind of meander and experience and see what, what does my body do when I do this? What do I, uh, because that's what I'm doing, right? I'm reinventing what movement means for me and I'm adding more of it into my life because it's not something that I have to do or I have to get through or I have to carve out this hour. So maybe this can be, for some of you, the start of a new habit, a new pattern, something in your life that you let go of, this is what I have to do, or this is the physique I'm, change, I'm chasing. And let's focus on the process of how does my body feel in a yoga class? How do I feel when I take my mat outside versus when I'm inside? What if I do go for a walk without my earbuds today? What do I hear in nature? And trust me, the outcome of the body that you're meant to have is going to unfold. It's going to, right? Um, so that's, that's the piece that I would love to add to what you so beautifully framed as just this new way of thinking about what what are the possibilities in this amazing body that we were born into and knowing full well that there are going to be little hiccups. Like I've got this knee thing going on. So I'm getting, you know, I'm getting on my roller a little bit more. My quads are quite a lot tighter than they have been since I've started, you know, lifting heavy things. Um, but, but the, here's the cool thing. I know that I can manage it. I'm not fearful that my knee is hurting. I'm not, you know, none of that. So, um, you know, let your body be a playground and see what you can see, how you can get connected to him or her. Yeah. I love that. Redefining what movement means to us and just, yeah, getting connected and seeing what happens. Um, it's okay. I mean, me and Jana both have fitness backgrounds, not to say that we're the end all be all rules, but it's like, it's okay to try something new. It's okay to not do the program that's in the latest fitness magazine. It's okay to be like, I like that, even though, you know, most people are doing this. And when we can build kind of that confidence and that you know, ownership of being like, Hey, I know what I like for my body and what works. And that's why I think movement can be so profound when we look at it that way. Cause then it can transcend into other areas of our life to be more curious, to try something new, to understand, you know, our body in new ways and build confidence there. Um, this has been so wonderful. And I, and I hope my, my dream always, every episode that I create is just like that one person has this, I don't know, aha moment or this moment that I know you and I both have had where it's like, you know, we have a moment where it's just like that spoke to me in that way. And I didn't know I needed to know that, but that was that. And everything's different because of it. So I hope that someone listening, at least one person is like, yeah, things are different now because I learned something new. And so, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Jana, thank you for being here and for sharing so much wisdom and knowledge um, about, yeah, areas that we can tap deeper into and connect deeper into, into our own selves. So then when we're out in the world, um, we can connect better with others too. I really feel like the inside job helps us connect with others. So um, yeah, let us know how we can connect with you and um, your website and social media, Pooch Ball Info, and then we'll uh, sign off for today. Yeah. So I'm Jana dot Danielson on Instagram or the cooch ball on Instagram. Um, you can direct message me. Um, email is just info at coochball.com. And I just want to say, and I, I actually, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very like, I'm, I'm honestly giving your audience this invitation connect with me because I feel like, especially women, we feel like we are alone when it comes to, you know, pelvic floor function and dysfunction. And 
I want to, I want to just, as we sign off, let you know that that's not the case. And in fact, last week, the stat that I, the newest stat that I read is that 50% of women are dealing with some sort of pelvic floor situation. So you're not alone. Really, the the next first step is just finding that person or, you know, someone to really acknowledge, you know, hear you, hold space for you and help you understand what the next step is. We know that 90% of pelvic floor situations are actually movement slash fitness in nature, which means that all you need is someone to help you connect the dots, help you learn in your body what you're lacking, what you're getting too much of, and then changing that. So you don't have to be that one in 10 women that has to wait until she's getting a pelvic floor surgery to fix this part of our body. We are extremely, the divine feminine is, is a beautiful being. Um, not that, not that the, the divine masculine is not, but I think sometimes as women, we just, we discount or we, we don't, you know, we have time for everybody else, but us. So please do reach out. Um, I'm happy to at least start the conversation with you. Yeah. Thank you for that open invitation and, um, reach out, reach out to Jana, connect with her. She has so many great resources and tune in to the episode. I'll link it in the show notes that Jana and I have done before, because you'll really get a clear picture of anatomy and function and a lot of the, um, the, uh, the, um, let's say dysfunctions or like incontinence or a lot of other things that can develop out of poor pelvic floor dysfunction. We go into um, much more detail into those things. So I, I love the, the, the value that you'll get from listening to this and from the previous episodes. Um, get connected with Jana. Thank you guys for listening. Jana, I appreciate you and all you do in the world. Mm -hmm. you do in the world. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, give us a review. This really helps a lot. And share this with a friend. I'm only one person. And with your help, we can really spread the message of self love and sweat and change more lives all around the world. I'm London Souza, reminding you that you deserve a life full of passion, presence, and purpose fueled by self-love and sweat. This podcast is a HitSpot Austria production.